To better understand elk populations and movements in western North Dakota, 20 bulls and 70 cows were recently captured and collared in a first-of-its-kind project in the state. After the major reduction inside the park where they removed nearly 900 animals inside the park, the dynamics really changed. We've seen multiple herds establishing outside the park, uh, uh, both to the north and one to the south. So right now there's a real need to have better information on elk movements and distribution. Stilling says several partners ensured the capture and collaring of elk was a success. We are working with elk that are located on Fort Berthold Indian Reservation, the south unit of Theodore Roosevelt National Park, on the Little Missouri National Grassland, and on private land. Capturing elk in the rugged North Dakota Badlands is not an easy task. So in order to monitor the movements of these animals, we actually used a, uh, a method of capture called helicopter net gunning. And uh, this method does not use any drugs. Uh, we simply shoot a net out, capture the animals, and uh, install a collar, uh, a GPS collar that records their locations for three years. Marina says GPS collars are collecting data frequently. We got them set for every two hours. And this, this uh, location data gets sent to a GPS satellite and then downloaded to my computer or and also over at North Dakota Game and Fish's computers and we can actually look at this data and it, it comes in remotely. What exactly is the purpose for collecting all this data from elk movements? Be able to tell where elk are located across the North Dakota Badlands in western North Dakota as well as we able to be able to determine some resource selection what type of uh, areas that they're looking for and that they're using more heavily than others. We'd like to take that location data and to develop a population monitoring technique to help us assess population annually for the near future. This is Mike Anderson in the North Dakota Outdoors.